The Sandman series completely changed the way I saw comic books. It showed me that pretty much anything was possible in the medium, and with comics you could tell stories that really couldn't be done anywhere else. Neil Gaiman's Sandman combines beautiful art with powerful storytelling and a narrative unlike any before seen or any seen since. I am a passenger, moving through your dreams. I am riding in your dreams. I ride on Dragonback from Manhattan. The dragon is made of riveted iron and smells of cotton candy. I travel briefly by bus. In the back, the dreamer copulates desperately, not noticing his autonomous passenger. I sit at the front and talk to the driver. Approaching the state of Delaware, the dreamer is a small dog, dreaming impatiently of a past life, long forgotten when he sailed tall ships across uncharted seas. The salt spray of the ocean stings my face. I am moving through dreams, pulling towards Mayhew, feeling for the jewel. Through your dreams, my sleeping children, you had a passenger. And you never knew. Neil Gaiman's Sandman centers around the character Morpheus, Lord of the Dreaming. Morpheus is the father of all dreams and one of the seven endless siblings whose parents are night and time. The first issue was published in January of 1989, and in 2013, the first issue of Sandman Overture was released, a prequel detailing the events directly prior to the original series. Neil Gaiman's Sandman is a different kind of fantasy. It's strange, cerebral, and bizarre, but not simply for the sake of being so. Every page is packed with meaning. The name Morpheus itself comes from ancient Greek mythology. Morpheus was a deity tied to sleep and dreams. He appeared in the dreams of mortal men in human form. In Gaiman's original series, Morpheus, often simply referred to as Dream, is captured while he had been traveling in a weakened state. The hedge wizard who captured him demands of Morpheus power and eternal life, but Morpheus denies him. For 70 years, Dream remains prisoner, leaving the realm of Dream without a ruler. Once he finally escapes, the hedge wizard who captured him is already dead, so it is his son who inherits Morpheus' rage. Well, have you no excuse, no explanation, some reason I should not take reprisal? We... we didn't want you. It was all a mistake. We weren't trying to capture you. We wanted to capture death. What? You wanted death? Then count yourself lucky for the sake of your species and your petty planet that you did not succeed. That instead you snared death's younger brother. You'll never know how lucky you were. It turns out the Hedge Wizard had hoped to capture death, sibling to dream which in truth never would have worked, since Dream was only captured due to his weakened state from the events of Overture. The first volume of Sandman, Preludes and Nocturnes, follows Morpheus as he regains his strength and hunts down his tools, a pouch of sand, a helm made from a demon's skull, and a ruby known as the Dream Stone, which was made to control the fabric of the Dream Realm in which he ruled over. Returning to the dream world restores some of his power, but he had placed too much of himself inside of his tools, and he needed them back. The dream world which Morpheus rules over is unending, and yet there is an outside comprised of infinite darkness and dust. The paradoxical nature of the dream world reflects the often irrational and incomprehensible nature of dreams. Dream's castle lies at the center of the dreaming, past the frontiers of nightmare and the ivory and horn gates. During his imprisonment, the dreaming realm, including Morpheus's castle, has fallen into decay. At your service, Lord. As always. Get up. Please, get up. Lucian, what happened here? What happened? You are the incarnation of this dream time, Lord. And with you gone, the place began to decay, began to crumble. The absence of Morpheus had also affected mankind. Since Dream was captured, there had been unrest within the minds of mortals. Those who once took refuge in their dreams could no longer find it, 
And not only do two of his tools remain on Earth in the hands of mortals who were never meant to have them, creations of the dream world have escaped into the mortal realm as well. The process of Morpheus restoring the dreaming starts with him learning the location of his tools from the feminine entity known as the One Who Is Three, the Mother, the Maiden, and the Crone. The three sisters take many forms throughout the series. Morpheus' journey to recover his items is perilous and sends him to the corners of Earth and even to Hell itself. Through use of metaphors, Neil Gaiman covers some pretty dark subject matter in this series and the series actually crosses over into various subgenres of fantasy including epic and urban fantasy. The characters of the series are mostly comprised of various legendary and mythological figures. Sandman is Neil Gaiman's metaphysical exploration of what dreams are and all the concepts surrounding dreams. Gaiman explores every aspect of dreams and the Dream Lord himself is also portrayed as the Lord of Stories for all stories are originated in the dreaming. The series continues to follow Morpheus as he does his work reigning over his realm and shaping the dreams, influencing the storytelling, and creating inspiration for all conscious beings. Sandman is my favorite graphic novel at this point. If you are interested in reading Sandman, you can either start with Prelude to Nocturnes, the original first volume, or you can start with the prequel Sandman Overture, which takes place directly before and has art drawn by the amazing J.H. Williams. Thank you guys so much for watching. Neil Gaiman was one of many that inspired my upcoming graphic novel, Tadia. To find out more information about this graphic novel, click the link in the description and get put on my email mailing list.